Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Fortmaster, and welcome back to another Kutzkazart reaction. Uh, ancient life as old as the universe. Yeah. Another one where I don't know, exactly know how to think. Just from that, is this video going to be talking about the possibility where the very origins of life were at the beginning of the universe? Which, well, that is kind of cool. That is somewhat like Lovecrafting at the same time. But also, at the same time, I'm just wondering, how would they even happen? Because from the comparatively little I know about the Big Bang, um, I do know that, what was it, for like, I know for several million years, it was too hot for even electrons to even just join up with, like, protons and neutrons and stuff like that. So, uh, how life would be as old as the universe? Uh, I'm a bit confused. <laughs> Hey, but I say that a lot about Kutzker's art videos, but then they do a generally good uh, time of explaining it. So uh, hopefully uh, that, you know, stays the same. So yeah, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet for some reason. Corner video will be linked to my Let's Play of the Day. And with all that out of the way, let's get this thing started then, shall we? Life has existed on one planet for about 4 billion years, as far as we know. But it might have started right after the Big Bang, when the universe was much stranger and more fantastic than today. A universe that might have allowed life to develop absolutely anywhere. The okay. cosmos might be full of the seeds of life, sleeping in a dead desert, waiting for a few drops of rain to explosively bloom and grow. Tiny and not so tiny aliens might be everywhere. So this is basically kind of like that whole, um, Oh, I forget what the actual name of it is. Uh, it's that it's that whole theory that life started or was brought to Earth from like a meteorite or a comet that crashed on it, like um, actually billions of years ago. But this is just sort of like an even further extension of that. It's like, again, that's weird. <laughs> In this video, we're going to put together two highly speculative yet scientifically grounded possibilities. Check out the scientific papers in our sources. Ah, uh, yes, science. To explain it, soup. Let's first look at the paradox of life on Earth. The life paradox. For its first few hundred million years, Earth was a magma hell, constantly yeah. bombarded by asteroids. But basically, the second things calmed down and the first oceans formed, life just appeared, and zillions of microbes settled every nook and cranny they found. <laughs> Only thing I can think of is that one part from uh, the history of the universe, I guess. Weather update. Cooler temperatures today and the floor is no longer lava. Weather update. It's raining. <laughs> the floor is no longer lava. This is kind of strange. Life on Earth seems to be almost as old as the planet itself. As if it was waiting around for an opportunity. But life didn't only appear extremely quickly. In that tiny time window, it also crossed a huge gap. Dark matter, to living things, okay. Living things, even microbes need to eat, poop, grow, and multiply. Yeah. To do that, they need a genome, the biological instruction manual that sets the inner workings of an organism. How dead yeah. things with no genome become living things with genomes is one of the biggest riddles of science. Simplifying a lot, the problem is that to have a functioning genome, you need proteins. And to make those proteins, you need a functioning genome. Ah, so it becomes a catch-22. That's the paradox. Okay. Again, the the one thing this kind of reminds me of is the whole like mitochondria thing, where it, I've said it, uh, I've said it before, and you probably heard of this, but where it, like it's uh, where the maiden theory is that the mitochondria was its own thing that was kind of like subsumed into an early organism. It, it they basically kind of like merged into a single entity. Um, so I'm almost thinking if. Something like that happened where you wait, no, but then you would you would still need something to be a lot. Okay, never mind. Uh, ig ignore what I just said. Both proteins and genomes are super long molecules made of pretty complex blocks that are extremely difficult to assemble by chance. Yeah, it's a chicken egg paradox with several chickens and eggs. Once you have a finished cell, the whole system works efficiently. But starting from simple dead stuff and reaching that level of sophistication by pure chance should require an amazing amount of time for trial and error. I mean, then again, it, judging by the graph you had there, that was still like a good couple millions of years. 
I mean, granted, that's like on a geological time scale, but like, you know, that's still a long time. <laughs> so how did the first living things manage to cross that gap in just a few hundred million years? Most theories about the origin of life try to explain that gap by theorizing how some primitive soup of prebiotic molecules could have efficiently produced the first self-replicating entities. But we still don't know how exactly this would have worked. Yeah. Maybe we need to think backwards. I mean, it also, I mean, granted, like, they're most likely going to be expanding on this, but I mean, it could also just be, you know, the early Earth was such a, like, chaotic place that it was essentially like the random number generator to end all random number generators and you just had like billions and billions of all possibilities that just kind of like were bumping into each other and eventually one just worked and started doing its thing <laughs> i mean granted we don't have fossil records going back that far i mean even if stuff was like fossilized i think the rock would have been recycled a couple of times over at this point the clock of evolution think of genomes as a book telling the history of life. As time passed and life evolved, more characters were introduced. Amoeba, fish, amphibians, dinosaurs, and mammals. Yeah. Over billions of years, the story of life got more and more complex. A genome can be viewed as a long string of letters with biological instructions. And from microbes to us today, functional genomes seem to have been increasing in size at a fairly constant rate. Actually, wait a second. The functional genome of fish is more than twice that of worms. Our functional genome is about twice bigger than that of fish, and so on. It is a bit more complicated, but for now, let's run with this. Okay. When we put all these clues together, it seems that genomes have been doubling in size on average every 350 million years or so. As if evolution had been following an exponential inner clock. But it gets even stranger. The very first microbes that emerged on Earth, even if they look simple, already seem to have- <laughs> Sorry about that, piece of spit went down the wrong pipe. Ugh. ...have had pretty long and complex genomes. But how could life have achieved that level of complexity in such a short time? There may be an interesting way to solve this riddle. We just take our exponential clock and extrapolate it back in time to the simplest conceivable life form something equivalent to a being with a genome containing just a few letters. But if we do that, okay. we end up 10 billion years in the past, more than twice oh, okay. the age of Earth, which means if life actually evolved like this, it didn't start here, but somewhere out there in space. This would explain why life started to thrive so quickly on our young planet. If it was already present in space like a seed, it just needed water and warm temperatures to wake up and go on evolving. And it would also explain the high degree of sophistication of the first life forms on Earth. They could have been complex already because they might have been evolving for billions of years somewhere else in the universe. On but an could asteroid really or something. That old? Maybe, yes. Actually, life could have started shortly after the universe itself was born. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that exclamation. A baby universe. At its most basic level, life needs two things. The right chemical elements to form complex molecules and a liquid medium, like water, in which those molecules can move and interact. The liquid medium needs to stay warm enough to remain, well, liquid. liquid. So when we search for life in space, we focus on Earth-like planets at just the right distance from their star, warm enough to sustain liquid water. But there was actually a time when almost all of the universe might have been habitable. Right after the Big Bang, the universe was extremely hot. But as the cosmos expanded, it cooled. And between yeah. about 10 and 17 million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was a thousand times younger than today, it was between 100 degrees Celsius and zero degrees Celsius, the temperature at which water is liquid. But would that have been long enough after the Big Bang for like for elements like oxygen to be around and like to actually make water is the thing. So for this window of time, more than 13.7 billion years ago, the whole universe, absolutely every inch of it, had the right temperature to support mm. life. Of course, the right temperature alone is not enough for life. Yeah. We also need chemical elements like carbon and oxygen, which are forged in the cores of stars. 
But were there stars in super early cosmic times? Maybe, yes. In regions of the universe where Again, matter black was hole especially star. dense. Such stars would have been very massive and gone supernova in just three million years, seeding the baby universe with the chemical elements needed to form dust, asteroids, planets, and the ingredients of life. Maybe the first ancestors of life were more exotic and didn't even need water, but thrived in substances like ammonia or ethane that can stay liquid at temperatures far below zero degrees Celsius. They could have been sustained by the lingering warmth of the Big Bang for tens of millions of years longer, well into a time when we know for sure there were stars and all the chemical elements. The real magic of this idea is that while the universe today is extremely deadly and hostile, back then the conditions for life might have been basically everywhere. For a period that may have lasted several dozen million years, primordial life might have been able to emerge on any rock, even between the stars sowing the universe with the seeds of what, billions of years later, would become bacteria, trilobites, dinosaurs, and finally us. At some point, the universe cooled down below the right temperature for life to thrive, but some of those ancestral life forms may have continued to exist in the internal warmth of the first planets, frozen in asteroids or hibernating in cosmic dust tiny seeds roaming the cosmos, waiting for new hospitable places to continue evolving. If they did, life now might be everywhere in the universe. Literally. Will we ever know? Yeah, that's... All this make... Yeah, the whole question's like, will we ever know? Like, something like this, this is exceedingly hypothetical. I mean, I mean, like, I don't even know how you would test for something like this, because, like, I know... For most of our stuff, when we're looking into space, it's involving telescopes that are like either, of course you have like optical telescopes, which are using like um, a, op a visual light or optical light in the like the visual spectrum. Or then you have like radio telescopes, which are reading radio waves. I mean, how would you even find out something about this besides, you know, going into space yourself and like, go like basically combing through the entirety of an asteroid belt or something like that and finding stuff frozen in the rock. It's for a nice story. And while both the habitability of the baby universe and our exponential clock of life are reasonable ideas, they're still speculative. Quote unquote reasonable. One more possibility among many others trying to explain our existence today. Yeah. But if life came to Earth from outer space, then it should have seeded other places in the solar system too. Maybe there are fossils in dry riverbeds on Mars. Maybe we'll soon find life in the warm underground oceans of Enceladus or Europa. Titan has seas, rivers, and lakes of ethane and methane as warm as the universe when it was 90 million years old. I that that sentence, that is that is a sentence right there. With seas as warm as the early universe, and then you look at the number and it's like minus 180 degrees. Jeez. So finding exotic life on Titan would support the idea that life could have originated in the weird baby universe. So far, when we look out into the cosmos, we don't see anyone like us. Yeah. But maybe that's because life needed 10 billion years or more to reach the level of complexity that allows for a technological species. Maybe there are millions of worlds filled with microbes, oceans full of exotic fish, and continents of bizarre animals and maybe even others like us that just recently gained consciousness and are beginning to look at the sky, wondering if they're alone. Life could be flourishing right now in uncountable forms and in all kinds of cosmic environments. And if many of us share a common cosmic origin, we would all be part of a great cosmic family. The answer may lie in our cosmic backyard. Let's go and find out. I mean, it's, it is definitely like an, like an incredible theory and it, it would certainly be something if it was real. I mean, the fact that like, I mean, and, and that just kind of goes to show how like incredible the universe is and to a lesser extent was, I mean, that to the fact that like you had theoretically a, a point in the existence of the universe where life could just exist 
in it, not requiring like special locations, like a like habitable planets or like asteroids or stuff, all this sort of stuff. It's just it goes back to the whole thing where I did my reaction to uh, like the, the video about black hole stars and just how stupidly big they th they might have been if they actually existed, and it just it makes you feel so small. Just where, like, you being cur the current endpoint to a line of succession that has been, that has, like, existed or may have existed in one form or another for billions and billions of years and may have not even originated on this planet. It is, it, it is nuts. Uh, but yeah, that will definitely have to be it for now. So, as I've said many times before, the original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet for some reason. Corner video will be leading to my Let's Play of the Day, and with all that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.